everybody. Welcome to episode two of A View from Mount Sinai. In this episode, we're going to talk about the role that lighting plays in pedestrian safety. So to set the stage for our discussion, let's rattle off a few interesting statistics, since everyone loves a good set of statistics, right? So according to a recent report from state highway uh, transportation officials, over 6,500 pedestrians were killed on U.S. roadways in 2020. That was up 4.8% from 2019. Although that's a low number, it's actually an alarming year-over-year -year increase by itself, and this continued in 2021. During the same period, data from the Federal Highway Administration shows that vehicle miles traveled actually decreased by about 430 billion miles, or about a 13% decrease, mainly due to the fact that we were all staying home because of the COVID-19 pandemic. So factoring in this decrease in vehicle miles traveled, the pedestrian fatality rate, which is pedestrian fatalities per miles traveled, actually increased by 21% from 2019 to 2020. This is the largest ever annual increase in pedestrian death rate since the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, or NHTSA, began tracking pedestrian deaths in 1975. In New York City, the home of Mount Sinai, at least part of our operation, 55% um, of pedestrian fatalities and 79% of ped pedestrian traffic injuries occur at intersections. Just this month, New York Mayor Eric Adams announced a major program to improve pedestrian safety at over a thousand intersections across the city. The prerequisite to prosperity is public safety and justice. And sometimes when we think about public safety, we think about the gun violence that we are witnessing in our city, but it's also about the traffic crashes. Uh, the tragedies that happen here, uh, have, they have changed lives. They have impacted New Yorkers in a real way. In intersections, many people don't know, but it is at, at intersections that we're experiencing 79% of pedestrian injuries and 55% of our pedestrian fatalities occur in intersections. So why are we seeing this increase in pedestrian deaths on streets and roadways in the U.S. during a time when fewer people are driving? To help answer this question, let's talk to uh, an expert in this issue, someone who deals with it on a daily basis. So Jesse, thanks for joining us today. Um, Tell us a little bit about uh, your organization, the Vision Zero Network, and the type of work that you do out there in San Jose. Well, first off, um, I work for the city of San Jose, California, which is separate from the Vision Zero Network. Um, so the, there are Vision Zero cities in the US, and we are the cities that are most attuned and basically work for a city that has adopted an initiative that is working to reduce traffic fatalities and injuries, um, and we're very data-driven. Um, so we tend to be very attuned to uh, what the number of traffic fatalities are in the city, sort of live, um, and look at them year to year and look at trends. Um, and the goal of Vision Zero programs at large are typically to reduce to zero, but I think that that <clears throat> is not always a reasonable goal. Um, and so personally, I would just focus on the, on the reduction side. So why do you think there's been such a large increase in car pedestrian fatalities, uh, especially in the last five to 10 years? The most obvious answer to this question is the, uh, basically the adoption of smartphones. So uh, smartphones were introduced slightly before 2009, but 2009 is when lots and lots of people started buying them. And so uh, then if you have really all modes of road users using them 
and they're not supposed to be. Um, another topic that um, I think is worth mentioning is that there has been a uh, growth in SUV sales in roughly this period. Um, the other thing is that uh, the growth of SUVs and light trucks are uh, tall vehicles, and so they hit a pedestrian higher. So those are two big answers that are tend to be given in my industry. I would add a third one, which is that the uh, likelihood of pedestrian death um, at higher speed limits. And you can see here on this pie chart, um, this is the distribution of roads in San Jose um, that have different speed limits. So um, I should say specifically of arterials in San Jose that have different speed limits. So um, there are a lot of them at 35 plus. And if you look at the, if hit by a vehicle traveling at at the 30 miles per hour line, you get a 50% likelihood of pedestrian fatality. If you're above 30, which most of these are, then your likelihood of pedestrian fatality is a lot higher. So, so far we've been talking about pedestrian fatalities along streets and roadways, but now let's bring it back to lighting. So when we look at the fatalities along roadways, 54% of them happen at night compared to 16% during the daylight. So obviously visibility of pedestrians has something to do with the fact that they're being um, struck by cars, injured, and killed. So let's talk about visibility. Visibility, one of the things that could possibly improve it might be lighting. Um, I'm here with Dr. John Bullough, who's the Director of uh, Transportation and Safety Lighting Programs here at the Light and Health Research Center. John is the expert on all things outdoor lighting. Um, so he's the perfect person to, to talk to about this issue. So John, when we think about pedestrians at night, what are some of the factors that affect how visible they are along a roadway? Well, thanks, Dan. Well, when we're talking about pedestrian visibility, one of the first things to remember is that if a driver isn't even looking at the pedestrian, they're not going to see them. So many, many times drivers spend too much time looking at their phones or other devices in their car. Having said that, to make a pedestrian more visible, one of the most important things is contrast. Um, basically, the difference in brightness between a pedestrian and their background. And that's really what our eyes are really wired to see is contrast. So how do we do that with lighting? Well, when we think about lighting, one of the first things we often think of is the light level, right? How much light are we putting? And, and we can change that by adding more lights or changing the wattage, increasing it. But really, the light level doesn't do a whole lot for us when it comes to visibility. Um, because if you have something that's low contrast, and often pedestrians are wearing dark colored clothing, like you stylish, are today. like me. And, and I'm wearing light colored clothing. We didn't plan this. We didn't plan it, but uh, surfaces like asphalt are also dark. So a pedestrian, seeing a pedestrian at night is inherently a low contrast task. Adding more light does help us see low contrast a little bit better, but it, we don't get as much leverage as if we could actually change the contrast. So when we think about lighting on roadways at night and you talk about light level, what's the typical light level that we might see along maybe a city street or a country road? Yeah, and, and many cities and towns use uh, horizontal illuminance recommendations, and those are in things like foot candles here in the United States or Lux uh, throughout much of the world. One foot candle is a typical light level that you might see in, uh, on a roadway or a sidewalk. Um, so we often use 30 to 50 foot candles in our offices, for example, and there's uh, thousands of foot candles uh, on a bright sunny day outdoors. Okay, so that gives people some idea of what we're talking about. Sure. So there are obviously in the United States lighting recommendations that are promulgated mainly by organizations like the IES, the Illuminating Engineering Society, and others as well. Mm -hmm. um, what do these recommendations say about pedestrian lighting? Well, they are beginning to recognize that to make a pedestrian visible, you do have to have what we call vertical illumination, light on my vertical surfaces. Pedestrians, we're three-dimensional uh, objects, and so we need to have light on our vertical surfaces in order to be seen. Early standards often use horizontal illuminance, and that's often what's in uh, standards from cities or towns at the municipal level. Um, 
we're beginning to see that changing through vertical light level standards as well. The problem with that is we're still using overhead streetlight fixtures and those fixtures will provide some vertical illumination if you position them correctly by moving them say back from a crosswalk instead of directly over, but they're still putting a lot of light on the background surface, on the street itself. That doesn't necessarily uh, help us with contrast all that much. Okay, so if we had a regular row of street lights and they were relatively close together, so if I were a pedestrian standing under one, you might see me, but it's actually hindered because there's a street light right behind me that's also putting light behind That's me. right, and so now. sometimes you're gonna be brighter than the background, sometimes you're gonna be darker, and sometimes you're gonna sort of blend in a little bit, and it's gonna be a little harder to see where you're coming. Remember that vehicles are also driving at night with their headlights. They tend to primarily put vertical illumination because those are closer to the ground, they're shooting light out, and that light will hit the pedestrians uh, on their vertical surfaces. Sometimes the street lights essentially do some, co they compete with those because they're putting light on the background and then you have higher brightness on the pedestrian, but also higher brightness in the background, and you negate the benefit of having higher contrast. What are some of the ways that we see cities and towns, what are some of the means they, they typically use to make pedestrians more visible or make cars see them? Well, one of the things that you often see in some uh, crosswalks are these flashing uh, beacon lights. So if someone's waiting at a crosswalk, there may be a push button, uh, to let drivers know someone wants to cross the road. And you have these bright flashing lights off to the side uh, where there are often maybe signs or other things telling drivers that it's a pedestrian crossing. Those do a good job at telling drivers, yes, someone's here waiting to cross, but where they may fall a little bit short is that they actually draw your attention away from the crosswalk, away from the road. Sometimes those lights can be a little glaring as well. And so that may actually serve as more of a distraction in certain cases than a helpful uh, safety element. So we're here in the Black Lab for a reason, and that's because we have these, uh, these bollards behind us. So John, tell us some of the work that researchers here at the Light and Health Research Center have been doing uh, on this issue of pedestrian visibility and how to improve it in roadways. Yeah, so uh, those of us here at the Light and Health Research Center have been looking at really the, the, the geometry or the location of the lighting as one factor to help change the contrast of pedestrians. And so this approach of using pedestrian scale sort of bollard level fixtures as one element in that, where these fixtures then, when they're illuminated, if we imagine there's a crosswalk in front of these, actually provide vertical light on pedestrians. So that means you're not competing with the headlights. Um, they bring the attention to the crosswalk because as people are in there, this is lighting up just that strip of crosswalk uh, where drivers should be looking if there's a pedestrian crossing. And as you can see, they also provide sort of an architectural element. As I'm crossing, one issue is that sometimes people don't use crosswalks as often as they should, and they might cross the street in a mid-block location, even though there may be a crosswalk nearby. Having these sort of bollard elements uh, actually gives something that people could walk through. It's like a gateway to tell me, if I come through here, I'm walking in the right place, here I am crossing the street. As you can see, with the overhead light, the pedestrian is very visible in certain locations, but as they move forward, they become much less visible with much lower contrast. With the bollard lights, there's a more continuous level of light on the pedestrians, which makes their contrast constant as they walk across the crosswalk. So we've done a number of uh, temporary field installations in New Jersey, in Colorado, the city of Aspen, in upstate New York here near Albany, and we found that when we set these up at crosswalks, uh, people like them. We ask, we bring clipboards and we ask the pedestrians, you know, what they think. They report that they feel safer. They feel like drivers can see them. They don't necessarily experience a lot of glare. You want to have some, some optical control so that you're not shoving light into people's eyes, which would create a glare source. Uh, but if it's designed well, it actually makes people feel safer, more confident, and they're more visible. What's interesting is that we've also found that drivers will drive a little bit more slowly when they approach a crosswalk with this type of lighting, about one or two miles an hour slower. That's not a very big difference, but it can add about 10 to 20 feet of additional safety margin if, that if a driver sees a pedestrian and needs to come to a, an immediate stop. So it does have a, a safety, safety angle as well. So one thing that may be possible to help deal with the issue of drivers being distracted by their cell phones as well as the increase in visibility 
is to use flashing of the bollards to help overcome distractions. And that will redirect the driver's attention to the crosswalk. If we flash the bollards between a lower and higher light level several times when pedestrians are waiting to cross, and then keep the higher level on when they're actually crossing, this may be an effective and safer way to attract a driver's attention. So to sum up, um, does lighting have a role to play in keeping pedestrians safer along roadways? I think we found that yes, it does. But it's more than just putting up a light pole and dumping lumens uh, on the road at every intersection. We have to think more about visibility and what can make the pedestrian more visible to vehicle drivers. And hopefully we've given you some ideas on how that can be accomplished. So thank you for watching this episode of A View from Mount Sinai. If you'd like more information on the work of the Light and Health Research Center, please visit our website and stay tuned for next month's episode. Thank you.